Well, Razorback fans, I think it's safe to ask the question, do the Razorbacks have a serious problem offensively not being able to run the ball? Well, let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Hope everybody's having a, a wonderful Tuesday. And uh, for those of you who have been complaining, or I should say complaining, I, I use it as, uh, you know, good. Uh, criticism, I guess. You said that there's been problems with my audio, and you know it's crazy because on my end I don't hear it. I don't know if it's when I upload it uh, to YouTube that it ends up being problematic. So hopefully this is better. I've made some adjustments. We'll see if it actually ends up. But always let me know if there's an issue there because I never want to have uh, a crappy quality of uh, audio or video or anything. I mean my opinions are crappy enough as it is. I don't need to have crappy uh, uh, quality on that front at all. So appreciate everybody letting me know and. Again, let me know if it's any better or worse or the same or if you don't even care. <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to start off today's podcast with you know, a topic that it got brought up. And I think I went into it on uh, yesterday's podcast. A lot of you commented on it in the comment section and the replies and, and everything about Arkansas and the issues that they had in running the ball, which I hear you. But I guess I didn't realize how strongly a lot of you felt about it. Some of you felt like I was being uh, too optimistic, which I felt like I, I wasn't. Or maybe felt like I was uh, not being uh, as critical as you'd like it to be or like me to be in that particular case, which, hey, that's it's your prerogative, whatever it is. But uh, I started looking at it a lot more and thinking about it a lot more. And the question kind of got posed not only to me on this podcast, but even on my radio sh- uh, show and saying that some people are like saying this is horrible. And this is a major problem, major issues. There ain't no heart on the offensive line. Nobody's any good. This team sucks. I took it to a pretty, pretty significant level. And I'm like, holy crap, everybody. Let's relax for a second. Well, you got to hear from Sam Pittman in his press conference on Monday. He does it every single Monday at noon. And he was simply asked about the rushing attack and the issues. And he kind of put it forth as far as uh, what the problem is, or at least what he has seen to be the problem with the rushing attack itself. Take a listen. Bottom line is this, is that our fits aren't good at tight end. they got to get better. Our fits are not good consistently up front. They've got to get better. Our blocking on the outside is on edge. It's got to get better. Um, our, our catching game, you know, we had two-third down. If we drop the ball, we stay on the field, the game could be much different. Those things we have to get better. Um, but after I saw that, I actually thought we played better last week than we did this week up front, but I didn't think we played too bad actually last week up front. That was picture real nation with that video. So Sam Pittman really just puts it out there fully and saying that, uh, their, their fits aren't very good. He said, the bottom line is this fits got to be or good at tight end. They got to be better. Fits aren't good consistently up front. Got to get better in our blocking outside on the edges. Got to get better in our backs have to run hard. It's a, it's a whole thing. Like, it's a group effort and something that's, you know, I, I think I alluded to a little bit yesterday that it is a thing where it's not just, oh, offensive line, bad. And then it gets fixed. It's not necessarily as easy as that. But, I do believe that with the concerns that have been brought up, a lot of them have been valid. But the question becomes of how serious of a problem is it? Though? Like, is it a big enough problem to where you can start legitimately as a Razorback fan looking ahead on the schedule and looking ahead this season and being like, yeah, I, I was saying nine wins or eight or nine wins, but now after seeing this offensive line or seeing this running attack, I'm going to six wins maybe. Like, are, is it that type of serious of a problem or is it a big enough of a problem or concern to where you're like, this is not good. It needs to be better. It can be better. They just got to figure it out. And I believe that they can. No, because not all problems are created equal. If you don't have talented running backs, for instance, if you don't have talented running backs, you can't fix that in the middle of the year. 
right? However, if you do have talented running backs that may be making the wrong decisions, you can fix that. Some things you can fix. There's only so much you can do in some cases, but some things you can't fix. It's the same thing with every other position group. Is it a talent issue, or is it just a coaching issue, or is it just a playmaking issue? It all can be true at once. But I believe that Arkansas has enough talent over the board and across the board to where they can be better than what we've seen. And that's why I think it's a fixable issue. Now, it's not as simple as snapping your fingers and then all of a sudden like, oh, now I get it. Now I know how to run block. I don't think it's that simple. But when you create it and you find out the, the five guys that you want to use the best and who are utilizing the best and finding the positions that they're the best fit at, while also getting the tight ends to come across into it too, that's going to change them. And I even believe that uh, something that Sam Pittman also said in his press conference is when he's talking about Dan Enos, he said part of, a little bit of a concern was in how this team is going to work with the, the rushing attack and how the offense has changed. Because the offense has changed, there's no doubt about it. But it was going to impact the rushing game uh, with the new Dan Enos offense. And that's what they got to figure out. That's why they fi- got to figure out of how to be more consistent, how to, how to figure things out. And I, I keep making the uh, comparison to what it was in 2015 when Arkansas had Danny Enos and how it started off a little slower, but then it picked up as time went on. I still believe that'll be the case. But he says that some fan concerns about the run game. He says he admits he has his own worries about how the offense team will impact the run game because they've been so dominant in the past. But it's a matter of working through it and working it out. I believe that there's still reasons to think that it'll be okay with the talent that you have. Because once you get it figured out, it works out. We've seen that even happen in a lot of cases, too. Like, think about previous seasons and even great years and Arkansas having some time to try to figure things out. Like, even in 2011, Arkansas won 11 games that year. And I remember they, they struggled against Troy in the early part. We scored 10 po- uh, beat them by 10 points. And the offense just didn't seem as crisp. But it worked out. You know, I brought up 2015. Uh, there are numerous examples of when the offense just couldn't really get it going. But once they did, it changed the entire game. It changed the entire season. The only thing about it is that in this particular case, if you're going to get it going, if you're going to put it into, pr- into practice and to be able to <clears throat> be a better football team overall about it, <clears throat> you don't have time to mess around. Like you're playing a Power 5 team this weekend. You're playing BYU. You're playing a team in BYU that uh, I believe is a better team than what they were a season ago. And you cannot afford to, in this game, lose at home, non-conference, at night, in front of a raucous atmosphere in Razorback Stadium, you cannot lose the game because you look back upon it and say, we couldn't run the ball. Regardless of the fact that we have so much talent at the running back position, regardless of our offensive scheme and how good it is, regardless of having K.J. Jefferson back there, the last thing you want to do is be looking back at the BYU game and you lose it, and the reason being is because you couldn't run the dadgum ball. You couldn't do it. Well, that, that's a frustrating thing. And that's why it's like, it's almost like time's up. Like you can't just mess around anymore. You don't have these warm up gimme games anymore. From here on out, it balls to the wall. Now, you are playing a good team in BYU this weekend, and then you got LSU on the road, which we'll talk about. Then you got AM, then you got Ole Miss, then you got Alabama, and then you, you, know, you got Mississippi State, you got Florida, you got. Auburn. I mean, you got a, a good amount of teams in front of you that are, aren't going to care about whether or not you figured out the running attack. You have to figure that out. So then my answer to the question is, is do I think it's a serious problem? Not yet. Not yet. I still need to see more. I still believe that you have enough talent to be able to be very effective. But you, you got to be able to put some things together. You got to be able to make it a, a lot more of an exciting thing, and a lot better of a uh, of a product that's consistent. I think you can, but if it's a pro- if it ends up being an issue again this weekend, folks, like then I am going to start getting to the point of like, okay, this ain't working. This is a problem. Uh, so I want to see it. I want to see it evolve. I want to see it get better. I think we all did, but I also want to see other things too. I mean, I want to see like Isaiah Centania get more involved. 
Uh, you know, I've heard a lot about Tyrone Broden. I'd like to see him get more involved, too. He's, he's a big body dude. I mean, I think the wide receivers are really good for Arkansas. And Luke Has seems to be the tight end of note that is uh, doing a great job in the, in the passing game. But, you know, can he pick up the blocking and pick up those schemes? It's yet to be determined. But, again, I'm not panicking. I'm not freaking out. And I'm, but I'm also not saying that all is well. I, you, I, you can be both. You can do both. You can say that there is a, an issue and a concern while also feeling like the world's not coming to an end. You know, you can do that. And that's where I'm at. So, not a serious problem yet, but is rapidly approaching it to where we come into serious problematic here. Folks, uh, I told you this episode is brought to you by Game Time. We know that buying your tickets and for all these sporting events can be stressful, but it really shouldn't. And that's why Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy all of the tickets you never need for the sports, music, comedy, and theaters that are near you, especially with their killer deals on last minute tickets for the best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun that you are going to have. You know, we think about this upcoming game with Arkansas and BYU, and it's going to be a packed out house. There's going to be a ton of people there, and maybe you're somebody that's listening in. It's like, I, I want to get tickets. I want to go to the game. Well, here's your opportunity to do so, because not only are they going to have plenty of seats available for you to buy through Game Time, but by downloading the Game Time app, which is a very easy app, you create the account, and if you use promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, you get $20 off your first purchase. So if you're thinking that you're trying to save some money on the tickets and maybe they're a little bit pricier, well, just use that promo code Locked On College. You get $20 off of that purchase for that Razorback game this weekend, and they get sent directly to your phone. That way you never have to d- dig through the emails or anything. It's directly on your phone on the app, and it makes it so much easier. So again, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use co- promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on college for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guarantee you are locked on razorbacks your daily podcast on the arkansas razorbacks part of the locked on podcast network your team every day all right so moving on into the next segment of the locked on razorbacks podcast uh, a few things of notes that uh, have been going on uh, as far as some updates also from Sam Pittman and uh, some of the things like, for instance, Rocket Sanders. Now, we've all been hoping that Rocket Sanders would be ready to go. Uh, he's not going to play this week. Uh, I, I, don't say, I won't say that's a surprise. And I'm really hoping, just by the things that Sam Pittman said, that he'll be ready to go next week against LSU because they're definitely going to need him. But uh, he's, he's continuing to be out and dealing with uh, the swelling that's going on in his knee, but still looks like he should be knock on wood, okay to go against LSU next week. Um, the other injury updates, Dwight McLaughlin, he was dealing with a turf toe issue in the game against Kent State, didn't play a whole lot, and they said that he actually did it on past Thursday. But Sam Pittman said that he's going to be good to go. He'll be back on the field against BYU, so that's great news. Everybody else that's been dealing with injuries as of note, or at least ones that we don't know of, uh, should be good to go and should be feeling good about uh, you know what they're going to be uh, doing there. But uh, still, Rocket. Rocket's the big one, and they're just trying to get some swelling off of him. And uh, I think Sam Pittman even said, quote, once we do that, we'll see how fast and whether we can have him back for LSU. I just don't know. So I don't want to say he's for sure coming back for LSU, but that certainly seems to be uh, the case of what they're looking for. Uh, also in the other news, which I guess you got to get through BYU this week, uh, but Arkansas has their schedule set for the LSU game because now we're starting to get to where you're about two weeks out and you get game times and everything released. For those particular games, and Arkansas is going to be playing at night in Death Valley in Baton Rouge as it's set for 6 p.m. and it's going to be televised on ESPN. So you're talking about the big dog. I know CBS at 2:30 is still the number one game, but I have always felt like uh, if you get the 6 p.m. game on ESPN, that's like second best game of the of the week usually. Usually, what it adds up to. But yeah, I've uh, I saw that and I'm like, okay, all right, I like it, I like it a lot. Want to see see how that goes? And we know that it's known for uh, being really tough at night, especially given how uh, how many times they've had some great matchups there. And uh, Arkansas's all time record is actually four and fourteen down there in LSU. But uh, Arkansas did win the last time in Baton Rouge because that was the game in 2021 where Arkansas won in overtime. Cam Little hit a game winning field goal. And, uh, you know, you think about it, like Arkansas, 
won that game by a field goal in two years ago, 16 to 13. And then LSU won by a field goal last year, 13 to 10. So maybe this is going to be another game to where it's pretty close. But it's crazy, too, because even like last year and the year before, Arkansas's offense was really good overall when it came to yardage and points scored and, and everything. But uh, they, for whatever reason, just did not do very well against LSU, scoring-wise. Like, they put up points against Bama two years ago. Even last year, they put up a good amount of points. I know K.J. Jefferson didn't play in the game against LSU, but I always found that really fascinating how everybody else, they were able to be pretty consistent putting up points, but LSU just not. But then on the other side, LSU didn't put up any points. Like, Arkansas last season gave up points to, to me and you. Like, they, you just go out there on the field and score 30. But the lowest point total that Arkansas had in a game last season came with LSU at 13 points. So it's just weird. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. And I know it's going to be a big game for all the right reasons or maybe all the wrong reasons. But I, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. I got to get through BYU this weekend. I know. I know. We got to get through all that. Just don't want to freak out. Don't want to start popping champagne bottles just yet. But. Uh, it's going to be a good one there in uh, Death Valley. I think Sam Pimmons said this, and I have always said this, and I 100% agree with it. I want every game at home to be at night and every road game to be at 11 a.m. I, I am always about 11 a.m. road games. If I'm not going to be there, give me 11 a.m. all day long. I'll wake up, watch the game, and I'll either be excited for the rest of the day or I'll just be in a bad mood. But gets the games over with, out of the way, you move on, and you don't have to go to bed too upset. Uh, for those night games, but just didn't get in this particular case. We'll talk some basketball news, actually, some really great basketball news here in just a second. But folks, get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, Razorback basketball got some really great news, uh, for those of you who may have missed it, with a commitment for the 2024 class, Jalen Shelley. He is a high-level four-star wing player. He chose the Razorbacks over Alabama, Louisville, Marquette, Ohio State, LSU, Colorado, Houston, and Texas A&M. He's out of Frisco, Texas. He's six foot eight, uh, and he's gone to uh, transfer to the prestigious, as Hogsports.com puts it, uh, Link Academy, which is right up there in Branson, Missouri. And I believe that's the same place. Yeah, that's the same place that uh, Jordan Walsh went. So nice little connection. There. He is, according to 24-7 Sports, he is the 47th player overall and 14th among small forwards in the industry. That's the composite rankings. So some people have them higher, some people have them lower, but that's about where it's at. And he's, uh, he's coming to Arkansas. He's a high-level four-star player, too. Like, grades out really high. And he had an official visit this past week. He spent time with the team and coaching staff, sat in on practice, attended the football game against Kent State. And uh, it came just under one year after his first trip to Fayetteville back in 2022. So uh, it's just crazy because his brother Jason took the gridiron as Missouri State's quarterback against the Razorback. So he's a left-handed player. He averaged 18.3 points, 6.2 rebounds, and three and a half assists per game as a junior. And uh, he's, yeah, he, again, he's a really, really highly talented player. I like the size of him, too, 6'8". Being a lefty, it's always tough to guard against those guys, too. So um, There's a few other players that they're going to have into the mix as far as visits come and go. But, uh, I, listen, I'm always excited about any time that you add a player to the Razorback roster. I don't care if it's a, a high school player or a transfer portal. However, it is kind of funny, like, this may have been three or four years ago, a much bigger deal than what it is. It's still a big deal, but like people like saying, okay, this could change a lot of things, change the game, whatever. But because of the transfer portal and because of, you know, never knowing what you're going to get out of true freshmen who come in, it's kind of like up in the air where it's like, okay, is this going to be a guy that steps in and makes an immediate impact? Like, is he, is he going to be like a Moses Moody type freshman or an Anthony Black type freshman? 
you know, or is he going to be, you know, like a Darian Ford or one of these players that you didn't really get to see much of and, or a KK Robinson that just couldn't get on the floor. Like I get that question and everything. And then there's sometimes where if it's not even to the level that you think it should be at, uh, people are like, okay, so we should get, bring in a transfer to try to make it a lot better because we can't have that. So again, it's always hit or miss. You never know. But my point is, is like, I'm okay with this. I'm always going to get excited about highly touted players, especially big players like this. And it just continues to show that Eric Musselman has is, is got it going on at Razorback basketball. Doesn't matter if it's transfer players. Doesn't matter if it's high school players. Doesn't matter who it is. Uh, Arkansas has got a great basketball program that is always appealing to some of the most highly talented players in all the land. So that's the, that's the most important thing. But again, just had to get some basketball news in there. And we all foul football all the time, but I'm excited for basketball season once it comes around. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.